that's going to position you as a thought leader, as someone who understands the industry's pain points. Then you take that YouTube video, blog post, whatever, and you share it on LinkedIn, you share it on Twitter, you share it on your own blog, and then people see, oh, you know what you're talking about. You're a helpful expert, therefore I'll do business with you. So kind of industry trends or industry pain points are good opportunities for short YouTube videos. You can do native video on LinkedIn, you can do blog posts or articles. So I think thought leadership is the way that that is often um, portrayed for B2B. Hey everybody, I'm Ken Newhouse, and I'm gonna welcome you to the Get Clients Now podcast, the show where high growth consultants and professionals come to access the newest and most effective methods and systems for online marketing, advanced sales and persuasive communication strategies, and automated marketing funnels. And if you're wondering if the Get Clients Now podcast can help you get more high value clients, enjoy more sales, build a massive tribe, and make more money, you're absolutely gonna love this show. Newhouse's work completely blows everything else that we've ever done with Google out of the water. I have been looking for a way to grow my presence online. And what I've viewed from Newhouse's work was something that certainly is faster than anything I've seen before. He says he's going to do something and he does it. He does it in the time frame that he says he's going to do it in. It's exciting when you talk about the results that you're going to get and you can believe his word because he follows it up with action. The nuance is direct, he's to the point, he tells you what's on his mind, and he backs his words up. From what I know now, from working with him, he's passionate about his work, and he backs it up 100%. What I like best is you offer something that no one else has out there, which is a pretty comprehensive approach about marketing a system. If somebody asks me, should they use a new house's team? Absolutely, because you're going to get the important information that you need very, very quickly. Um, on the internet, on the different marketing techniques, I've never experienced anything like this. I would definitely recommend Ken Newhouse for someone who's serious about growing their business. I think that your results, based on the numbers, would at least double the sales in a very short time frame. Hey everybody, Ken Newhouse here from KenNewhouse.com, and I want to welcome you back to the Get Clients Now podcast, where the one-size-fits-all marketing model is dumb, the client-centric business model is king, and the sales control system delivers methods that get you clients so you can build your tribe with certainty. Now, I want to remind you that MailChimp is now supporting the Get Clients Now podcast. With MailChimp, you'll find all your marketing needs in one place. Bring your audience data, marketing channels, and insights together so you can reach your goals faster. With MailChimp, you can promote your business across email, social, landing pages, postcards, and more, all from a single platform. Today is episode number 337 of the Get Clients Now podcast. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking once again with Jason McDonald, the best-selling author of the Social Media Marketing Workbook, How to Use Social Media for Business. Now, as you know, we just finished a two-part series on search engine optimization with Jason. And according to my notes here, Jason revealed over a dozen, which is just simply amazing, but he delivered over a dozen high-level, easy-to-implement SEO strategies over a dozen methods that get you clients by helping your website rank at or near the top of Google very, very quickly, which in my opinion, and based on the number of downloads his shows have had, is incredible. I've got to admit that the feedback on these two shows, these two episodes, has actually exceeded my expectations. And I want to thank those of you who actually invested the time to share your feedback, uh, submit questions, and then those of you who actually sent those virtual high fives me to pass those on to Jason because of the information that he gave on the show. You know, he was gracious enough to do the initial interview with me. And before we knew it, our initial interview actually lasted almost two hours, which allowed us to dive into search engine optimization, SEO, very, very deeply. And at the same time, it gave me ample time to kind of pick Jason's brain on the topic of social media marketing. Now, I think it's fair to say that everybody knows that SEO is an essential part of your online marketing strategy. And I think it's equally true when everybody says that social media marketing is just as important, if not more important than SEO. Now, I don't have an opinion on either side of the fence. I'll let you guys decide that. But on today's show, my job is simple. My job was to interview Jason and if possible, get him to reveal several high level strategies that he didn't include in the most recent update of his best selling social media book. Now, when I talk about strategies he didn't include, let me just say this. There was a pre-call that I did with Jason before we did the actual interview. And in that pre-call, Jason and I discussed some of the things that he's working on with his high-paying clients, some of the strategies he's actually been using to help their businesses, 
at a very, very high level, which is one of the reasons I'm so excited. Now, let me say this. I've already done the interview with Jason, and I can say with great anticipation and excitement that Jason literally, as he knocked it out of the park for you. So if you're listening to today's show because you want to learn the hottest, most effective social media strategies on the planet, what's working right now in the trenches, let me just say this. Get ready to be amazed and delighted because Jason absolutely over-delivered on today's show. I want to say a few things about social media marketing. First, I do not consider myself a social media expert. And like my most successful clients and members, we are managing with some difficulty to make it pay. And in my opinion, and in Jason's, virtually every business today has to have, including dentists, professionals, chiropractors, consultants, coaches, even small mom and pop businesses. You've got to have a presence on social media, right? A solid presence. But if you must participate, and you must, you got to make it pay. You got to make it pay in real dollars, not imaginary, what I like to call hopeful metrics. Listen, if I've said this once, I've said it a thousand times on this show, you're in business to make a profit on purpose. We're all in the money business. We're not in the business to collect likes, friends, views, tweets, retweets, and viral videos, right? We're not in that business. We are in the money business. And over the last 21 years, you know, I've come to the realization that most people fail miserably at the money business. And one of the primary reasons people fail at the money business, and I'm talking about success in business, having a profitable business, is because they're not willing to do the hard work. They're not willing to invest the work to determine, as an example, as it relates to today's topic, is social media marketing something I can invest in with a legitimate expectation that it's going to return an ROI, a positive return on my investment. I don't care about likes. I don't care about shares. Yes, there is a social proof element to that, which can be leveraged and then turned into money. I'm talking specifically about if I invest $1,000 in social media marketing, am I going to get back $1,500? And most people fail at this because they're not willing to do the work. Not only the work of making sure that they're hiring someone who is a legitimate social media marketing expert like Jason, but people who aren't willing to do the work of writing the content, consistently producing content on the platforms they want to play on, they want to participate on. Now, if the fact that I say that most people fail because they don't do the work, they're not willing to work hard, don't take my word for it. But listen to what Gary Vaynerchuk says about the connection between how hard you're willing to work and the success you enjoy in social media and the success you enjoy in business. Work. It's work. Like, there's gonna be nothing else. Yes, work smart. I can hear the cynicism already. I can read the comment from Sally right now, but you gotta work smart. Yes, it's better to have a better strategy and to work smarter, but here's the punchline. Nothing happens without it, and I mean a lot of it, and the more you want, the more work you gotta put in. The bigger your ambition, the more you gotta punch that clock and you gotta give up fun and leisure and laziness and rest and all of it. My actions map to it. It's like intent. I talk a lot about intent. Some of the people internally razz me about it. They're like, yeah, cool, but intent without your backing up the actions is whack. And I'm like, I respect that. But it starts with intent. So I believe it probably starts with visualizing what you want. I believe in that. I live it. The problem is I disproportionately out-execute everybody else I know that talks about it and then does nothing about it. People like to talk. Show me. Because that's the best part. Because when you live on execution, all those days you have where people say you're staging garage sales or you're not gonna do this or you're not gonna do that, you know what the best part is? Work. So you gotta be willing to work your butt off. And if you're willing to work your butt off and if you're willing to take the strategies that Jason gives you today, the social media marketing methods and strategies that he gives, and again, these are methods and strategies that for the most part, he only reveals to his highest paying clients. But if you're willing to put these to work and if you're willing to do the work, whether you're paying someone else to do the work or whether you're doing the work yourself. You gotta be consistent, willing to do the work, but if you're willing to do that, I promise you the information Jason gives you today is going to pay off in spades for you. All right, so if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and welcome Jason McDonald back in on the show. Okay guys, so we're gonna move from now into social media, um, and just one more time, the SEO Fitness Workbook 2020 covers everything Jason just mentioned times a whole lot more um, in 
finite hold you by the hand just to add water detail. It's definitely a book you want to get. Again, I'm going to guarantee the book. Buy it. It'll be the best investment you've made in SEO ever in your practice or your business. And if you can't say that, email me and I will replace the book with a book of uh, same, obviously same genre, but equal or lesser value. So let's now talk, Jason, if you don't mind about social media marketing. I know there's so many people online who are, you know, they've got the secret for social media. Yeah. But like I said, I've, I know a lot more about social media marketing and I've never found a book with anywhere even remotely close to yours. It's just that good. So let's, where do we start given our same situation? Let's kind of walk through that. Yeah. So again, if you just use Dennis as an example, I mean, there's different. So, so the kind of thing here is, is look <clears> at your <throat> customer base and sort of kind of ask some questions such as how do people discover you? Right. So we mentioned like word of mouth, right? Recommendations. So in the real world, right? People will say, Hey, do you know any good dentists? Do you know any good orthodontists? Do you know any good chiropractors? Oh, I do so and so. The recommendation of one friend to another, that's your best marketing channel. And you want to obviously do everything you can. But there's what we call e word of mouth. That's where someone goes on Facebook and they say, Know any good dentists? Or they go on Facebook and Facebook recommends a dentist because their friend just wrote a review of that dentist. Or um, the dentist, uh, Facebook, Instagram, whatever page shares some content and a friend of theirs likes it, shares it, comments on it, and then these social media feeds pick that up. So a dentist that has a contest of like, you know how in the Halloween times, you, the kids can bring the candy back and the dentist gives the kids money rather than candy. And then I think they burn the candy in the backyard or something, you know? So that photo then goes viral or gets some share content, then people learn about it. So I, the first question I would ask is like, where do your customers hang out on social? And what are the kind of things that would sort of promote your brand? Social is a little bit of a softer sell environment than SEO. So it's not so in your face, like here's a dentist call now, you know, act now 10% discount. But I think you can start to think, oh, okay. And, you know, they would go on Facebook and ask for reviews or they would share content that's like, oh, the kids who just had their first um, teeth cleaning or something like that when they're, you know, one years old or whenever they have that first um, dental experience type of thing. So think about where your customers hang out and, and start to think about the content that they engage with. Um, it's going to vary. If it's a B2C, like a dentist, it's going to be Facebook and Instagram. If it's um, B2B, often it would be on LinkedIn. People would go more on LinkedIn and have a professional conversation. How do I grow my small business practice is more of a LinkedIn social content. So you got to figure out fish where the fish are, where are the fish, right? Right. And then what are they doing on these social networks? And then you start to think about what kind of content can you create? The other thing on social, especially for this kind of market, um, is what I call trust indicators. I think a lot of people don't emphasize the trust indicator nature of social. So they get kind of hung up on you know, my post isn't going viral. I'm not like Shakira and JLo's video of the Super Bowl that has like a billion views. A lot of times it's like, oh, I look at this dentist. Am I going to use them? Oh, I look at their Facebook page. I look at their Instagram. They look like they're kind of happy people, happy employees, happy customers. I get that trust indicator that, okay, they're pretty cool people and they seem to have a kind of a good culture. I'll do business with them. So a lot of times for these businesses, your social is um, more of a trust indicator than it is of a lead generator, I think, if, if, if you follow me on that. I do. What would be a trust? So let's look at this then from the example, because I have a lot of B2Bers on the show that listen. What are trust indicators? Just a few of those as an example for B2B companies on on social. Yeah. So a B2B, like... Um, like a common example, like a lot of B2B is about thought leadership. So it's about being that that vendor that understands something. So uh, let's say that your executive, like there's some new, new industry um, legal change. Like uh, I think in medical, it's like HIPAA or hippie or something like, you know, all the HIPAA. changes about, you know, mm -hmm. patient privacy. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're a B2B, you sell um, CRM, uh, customer relations management software to dentists. And dentists are like, oh, my God, now I've got to comply with all this HIPAA nonsense that I don't understand. 
and you write a blog post or a YouTube video or something that kind of says, here are the top 10 things you as a dentist need to know about HIPAA. That's going to position you as a thought leader, as someone who understands the industry's pain points. Then you take that YouTube video, blog post, whatever, and you share it on LinkedIn, you share it on Twitter, you share it on your own blog, and then people see, oh, you know what you're talking about. You're a helpful expert, therefore I'll do business with you. So kind of industry trends or industry pain points are good opportunities for short YouTube videos. You can do native video on LinkedIn, you can do uh, blog posts or articles. So I think thought leadership is the way that that is is often um, portrayed for B2B. Okay. On B2C, it's often just fun. Here's here's the kids. They brought their Halloween candy in. We're doing a service to the community by removing this toxic, you know, c- c- candy from the from the kids' environment, and we help the kids make a little money on the side. So that's not thought leadership. That's more more of like a good good com- good community citizen. Yeah, one of the things that I did, I know Facebook, you know, talking about B2C with respect to, as an example, dentists, you can't use, like if you're a weight loss person, you can't run ads. They're very strict on the type of stuff. Health stuff has a lot of restrictions. Yeah, so I've just found that running ads with just an image with a bright contrasting color in the background, they can click on to see a patient give a testimonial, but the testimonial, the patient isn't, it's a real testimonial from the patient the doctor actually gets in their office. But um, I've had really good success with that, but you just can't have any like proof claims or anything like you can't make standoffish claims. The last campaign I ran on Facebook, I generated for the doctor in uh, Oklahoma City. I think we got 78 leads for 57 cents each people to opt in for the quote unquote free report, which is a sales letter I wrote for him. But that's unusual. I mean, I'll say that for sure. But he was averaging new patients for right around 21 bucks which again is unusual, but still it can be done. I mean, you definitely can use social media, but you can't, just like I wrote a blog, I was writing a blog post today. You can't, you got to deliver value in your advertising. You can't, you know, the old, remember the old direct response, because I'm a direct response copywriter, all the sensational headlines and that repulses people today. So you, there's an art to this and you've got to be, like Jason said, you, this is much more nuanced on social media. And so you can't just bludgeon people with hardcore in their face, you know, lose 50 pounds now. That wouldn't be tolerated on, I know, Facebook for sure and probably any other platform. I just wanted to comment on that. Jason, what's the next process then once we've kind of got yeah, the trust? Yeah, so what you're, the other thing you're alluding to, which I think people have to start thinking about, is what what, what falls into the whole rubric of content marketing, right? So, uh, you know, oftentimes when you write a book, if you're a author of non fiction, right? A lot of times you write a book because you're like, you get fed up of all the other books that are out there, right? And there are a fair number of social media books out there, you know, blah, 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 God bless them. But they don't say, gosh, content marketing is really important. You have to have some basic content skills. And I, like I said at the intro, I come out of print. That's where I started a million years ago. And content marketing is, is kind of what we were doing before the internet. Well, you as a dentist, you as a B2B person, you as a chiropractor, you as a small business person, you got to think about content. What kind of content can you produce that people actually want to read, listen to, watch, whatever? And you got to think seriously about, about that content. And, and, and I think a lot of it falls kind of under different rubrics. One rubric is what I call helpful expert. A lot of B2B is helpful expert. Here's this industry, you know, train wreck around HIPAA, and I've sorted it out for you and tell you, here's the things you need to know. So I'm a helpful expert to you, helping you. That's why, like my marketing almanac, I produce this huge almanac because I'm a helpful expert for all the people who are too busy to keep track of all this. It's like, here it is every year. Boom, take it. Helpful expert. And then some of those people become clients, yada, yada. Um, And then for consumers, it's often more of like, fun or your customer culture or, you know, this sort of people, humor is a nice, safe emotion for businesses. Outrage is huge on social media. Very few businesses want to play the outrage game. It's a very dangerous game to play. But humor, here's the kids, they're having a good time. We, we help them with their candy addiction. That's a safe emotion that makes people feel this is a fun place to go. Uh, to deal with my dental issues. So 
humor is a kind of a content marketing strategy and helpful expert. And I think you have to think about your content that you can produce in systematic. Use another example. You're uh, a pizza restaurant. People come in for their birthday celebrations. You should take their photos. You should say, oh, everyone's here for a birthday. Let me take a photo. Click. And then we're going to share the photo of you guys having a good time on our Facebook, on our Instagram, whatever. And what are those people going to do? They're going to check it out. It makes them look cool. So now you've got a very simple process. Every time we have a birthday, we give them the, you know, the dumb little pizza with some whipped cream and a little thing. And we sing happy birthday and we take a video and then we put the video on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and then they know and we know. And we're using a very simple content marketing to, to keep our name out there. That's an example of content marketing. And so you've got to think about what's your content marketing. So let me just throw this question in um, quickly with respect to dentists. Are, am I understanding you correctly, Jason, that a dental website that has beautiful stock images that every other dentist website has and has pages as far as the content goes that basically reads like a recipe, or not a recipe, a menu in a restaurant so that they're all the same. This is what we offer. Okay, this is where I went to school. This is where I graduated from. These are my certifications. This is the institute where I got my specialization in. Are you saying that dentists need to do more than just have a website that looks and feels like every other dentist and they need to put fun, relevant content on there that their prospective new patients might want to read and be interested in versus just looking at a menu like in a restaurant like every other dentist? Am I understanding you correctly? Uh, yes. Now, within that, here's the other thing to throw out there, right, is think about people fall into the trap of like quality, which quality is important. I would say even more important quality is authenticity. So think about the dentist. So I moved here to Oklahoma recently. I chose a dentist. I, you know, it's not just hair club for men. I'm also a user, right? So I come here. I looked up dentists. I Googled them. I read reviews. It kind of funny, funny story for the dentist community. So I looked up one dentist in Tulsa, shall remain nameless, called them on the phone. No answer. I got answering service. <laughs> Big mistake. Right? I mean, I, here I am ready to go. I'm going to be your customer for life. And I call in and it's like, please leave us a message and maybe we'll get back to you. I'm like, screw that. Click. Not going to use them. Use a different dentist. Uh, same process, right? Now, here's what, and I don't work for this dentist at all in a marketing capacity. It's a daughter-father team. And the dad is older and the daughter is younger. And it is a little bit of a family transition. They have a lot of really great content opportunities. Let's say they did a video where they talk about dad and the daughter working together, building their practice. That's authenticity. People like to go to a business that they go, oh, that's kind of neat, right? I mean, they're working together as a family and they love dentistry and teeth and all the stuff that I couldn't care less about, but that's what they do, which is awesome. And, and I like that. So think about like a simple intro video of, I, this is why I devoted my life to dentistry. This is what I do. Man, you're singing my tune. I've been begging people to do this. In fact, we just did a simple intro yes. video. Oh my gosh, Very important. Great. Yes. Little, you know, our story, I mean, you know, some, you can be a little bit more Machiavellian. Let's say you sponsor the breast cancer walk or the save a, save a dog foundation. And you can have some stuff about that. That's a little bit adjacent to your keyword themes. The other, you know, think about your clients, right? As a client, as a person goes in, this, you know, I'm not terrified of dentists. It isn't fun. Right. So what's our anxiety? Like, Oh, my teeth are going to crack and I'm going to have to have a crown have a video about what do you do with the anxiety and the pain and how's the process work? So the person who can go, okay, this is, this is what I'm looking up to. That kind of content, especially video content is really valuable to differentiate yourself from the every other. I do a lot of work with lawyers. I have a lot of lawyer clients and I love my lawyer clients. Shout out to my lawyer clients. I always give them a hard time. You guys all wear suits. You all look alike. No one trusts you. So you have to, as a lawyer, you've got to sort of stand out from everyone else who looks like they have a suit and went to law school and have some boring stuff that no one reads about fill in the blank boring law. You've got to stand out in a way that still works with your brand. 
so uh, authentic video content, which can also be on social, it can be on LinkedIn, it can be on Facebook, it can be on Twitter, whatever, uh, is really a good kind of content that I would say. So you think about some authentic video content that then can be shared on social and it can also be um, on your website. That's why, and video is m the most common, but don't think you have to have this over the top, amazing production of the video. It can be shot with an iPhone, very simple and edited. It doesn't have to be, people don't expect it to be studio quality. Yeah, you said based on being authentic, I think it's much more authentic to shoot it from a smartphone, like an iPhone or an Android or whatever you use, than it is to have some sort of produced, you know, you got a film crew coming in your office and doing that. I think it looks a lot more authentic. All right, you got time for one or two more suggestions? One or, yeah, one or two more would be great. Okay. The other thing I would say, here's another social thing that I think people fall into the trap of is, you know, you've got to fish where the fish are. So if you're a dentist and your customers are consumers, right, you don't really need to be on LinkedIn. You don't need to be on Pinterest, right? Twitter is kind of dicey as to how influential that is. But you do need to be on Facebook and you do need to be on Instagram because that's where the customers kind of live. So I think one, one trap to not fall into is you have to be on all the social platforms. You've got to choose the platforms that really resonate with your customer base that's the first thing. And then within that, what's the content that they consume on those platforms? So people on, say, Instagram or Facebook, it's very short video. It's very short photo. It's not some detailed whatever. YouTube is a little bit more, I want to learn how something works. So think about where the customers hang out and don't do the ones that they don't hang out on. And then think about the content that works. I one of the mistakes people make is they do Twitter and Pinterest and YouTube and Facebook and, and TikTok and you know Snapchat. And, and they're, they're doing all of these poorly as opposed to doing one or two really well and choosing the one or two well that reach their customers. If you're B2B, blogging, YouTube, LinkedIn is probably where you need to be, not TikTok. That's, that's for teenagers, right? And don't forget, and don't forget podcasting because that's worked really well for me. Podcasting for sure, especially thought leadership. Yeah. Being on podcasts, having your own podcast, thought leadership is where business people, when they're jogging or they're driving, they listen to podcasts. Absolutely. But the consumer, I don't want to listen to a podcast about dentistry, right? The consumer, no, B two B, yes. So well, think well, about your media choices. And then I think the other thing I would say on content, think about the kind of content you can produce easily, systematically, right? You know, that you can stay with it. So if you're a pizza restaurant, every time somebody has a birthday, you take the video, you put the video up, you've got a little machine going that's very high value. If you're a dentist, maybe it's every time somebody brings in that first visit of a young patient, everyone's gonna cry when they see those videos. They're gonna love that. So, so think of a very systematic, you know, every time the kid has no cavities, we're going to take a short video, really congratulating the kid and put that on our Instagram slash Facebook slash YouTube. What, who, what's going to happen? Mom, dad, grandma, friend, they're all going to check out that video of little kid who had no cavities. So now you've got your social spread. And now what I think is better, you've got a system for your staff. Every time the kid has no cavities, ask them if they will let us take a video and ask mom and dad to sign the, you know, the disclaimer so we can put them up on our YouTube channel. Now we have a little machine so that every time this happens, we're doing this. So, you know, I'm like, don't try to think. You don't want to, you want to just be very cookie cutter on something that people will resonate with. Absolutely. Okay. So one, here's the last question. And this is one I ask everyone. What's the one question today, Jason, that I didn't ask, but I should have asked. What's the one question you didn't ask that you shouldn't ask? I would say that I, st I stole that from yeah. Larry. I stole that from Larry. Yeah, no, that's a good thing to think about. So what's going to get us out of left field that we don't see coming, right? I would say the the thing that people don't see coming is how important advertising is on social platforms. The era of everything for free on social is drawing to a close. And we're mo moving into an era where they're taking away more and more of the freebies and you have to pony up to the bar and have a budget to pay 
to reach, especially Facebook and Instagram, you really can't do it for free anymore. I'm not saying you have to have an enormous budget, but you have to have some, some budget for advertising. So people have stigmatized advertising. Um, they hate advertising. They just won't even look at it. And I think it advertising needs to be part of your tools as a, if you're serious as a business. I'm That's good. Not saying only advertising, but I think people are just so against it and they miss out. There's a lot of cool advertising opportunities that are out there. Okay. And so again, social media marketing workbook and SEO fitness workbook 2020, and then the new marketing almanac 2020, which is free on your website. And that's jasonmcdonald.org. Yeah, that's the easy way to find me. And then the other two books, we want to buy those directly from Amazon, correct? Yep. You can only get them from Amazon. I've drunk the Amazon Kool-Aid. And then guys, leave a review. Please leave a review for his books. And if you leave a review for his books, what did you tell me, Jason? Is there a process? Send me an email. Send me an email. <laughs> I will really be very thankful. Wink, yes. wink. Yeah. If you have a question or something, I'm sure he'd be happy to answer your question. I do. I answer a lot of questions. People are always blown away. I say my books, ask me a question. I answer questions every day. And I can't tell you how many people send me email back. I can't believe you answered my question. I'm like, well, it's good marketing. And I enjoy it. I, la- I enjoy the questions because that's how I learn. Absolutely. The last question. I encourage that. Hey, listen, I can't thank you enough for doing this. Thank you for having me. Elijah. I just can't. It's been, you will be one of my most coveted guests of 2020. I can guarantee you that. So. Thank you. Our objective with this podcast is to help you and your business stand out in the marketplace by crystallizing your messaging, marketing, and communications. On behalf of the whole Ken Newhouse team, thanks for listening.